Commander Raj Singh stood at the heart of Earth's last bastion of defense, the Strategic Command Center, deeply entrenched within the Swiss Alps. Surrounding him, walls adorned with screens depicted a grim scenario, a multitude of hostile ships advancing toward Earth's orbit, each vessel a formidable component of the Gavorn fleet. The room was alive with controlled chaos. Analysts and officers exchanged sharp, concise information, their voices forming a discordant symphony against the soft hum of computers. Raja's eyes, dark and resolute, shifted from one screen to another, fully grasping the magnitude of the looming assault. Commander, you need to see this, Lieutenant Mira Chen called out, her voice piercing through the cacophony. She gestured for him to approach a console that displayed intercepted communications from the Gavorn command ship. Among the alien script, a chilling directive was translated on the screen. Complete subjugation of Earth within one standard cycle. Raj's jaw clenched. The Gavorn were not merely showing off their military strength, they were ready to launch a full-scale attack. However, it was the cryptic postscript that caught his attention, a reference to a relic hidden beneath the moon's surface, ominously referred to as the Harbinger. Driven by curiosity, Raj turned to Mira. Get Dr. Kale Renner on the line. Immediately. Minutes later, Kyle appeared on the holographic display, his hair disheveled and eyes intense, seemingly rushed from his own recent discoveries. Raj, I've stumbled upon something extraordinary, Kyle announced, his voice tinged with both excitement and gravity. Ancient texts mention a weapon, the Astra Prayoga, allegedly sealed by our ancestors beneath the lunar mare Chrysium. The command center fell silent, every eye fixed on the hologram. Raj pondered the implications a weapon of such power concealed away, enveloped in mystery and potentially capable of altering the course of the war. How certain are you about this, Kale? Raj asked, his skepticism evident in his tone. Kale's reply was steadfast, his conviction unmistakable. I've cross-referenced the ancient texts with recent lunar scans. There's a definite anomaly, Raj, located precisely where the texts indicated. Decisively, Raj addressed his team, his voice firm. Prepare the shuttle, we're heading to the moon. As the team sprang into action with a renewed sense of purpose, Raj allowed himself a brief moment of hope. It was a hope that humanity might still have a chance, a whisper of victory against the stark expanse of space. The battle to avert annihilation had begun. With a silent prayer, he pledged to defend Earth at all costs. Not today not while he was in command. The lunar shuttle, Artemis. Sliced through the cold vacuum of space, its engines emitting a quiet, unyielding hum. Inside, tension saturated the air, each team member acutely aware of the gravity of their mission. Dr. Kale Renner, hunched over his portable data terminal, tapped rapidly as he cross-referenced ancient scripts with the satellite imagery of their destination. Commander Raj Singh watched the moon's surface draw nearer, its cratered visage eerily tranquil. Time check, he called out. We're T-minus 20 minutes to the Mayor Chrysium landing zone, replied pilot Ada Monroe, her hands poised and steady at the controls. Kale looked up from his screen, locking eyes with Raj. Once we land, I'll need about 15 minutes to calibrate the excavation drones. The anomaly is deep, likely buried beneath the old Apollo sites. And if the texts are correct, then let's hope history is on our side today, Raj cut in. His voice a blend of determination and fatigue. He addressed the crew. Listen up, everyone. We're not just excavating a relic. We're potentially uncovering a weapon that could save our planet. Stay alert and stick to the plan. The cheer Artemis touched down on the lunar surface, sending clouds of regolith into the air. As the dust cleared, the team disembarked, their suits shielding them from the moon's harsh environment. They established a perimeter with automated defense drones, a necessary precaution in case the Givorn detected their activity. Kyle led the team to the designated site, an unremarkable patch of lunar soil that belied the secrets it might conceal. 
he activated the excavation drones, which began their descent into the moon's crust, their progress reflected on a holographic display. Anything could be lying below, murmured Mira, her eyes glued to the screen. Do we even understand what we're searching for? Absorbed in monitoring the drones, Kyle responded without diverting his attention. The Astra Prayoga is described as the breath of Vishnu, a force that can create or annihilate worlds. Whether that's a metaphor or literal, it's still unclear. As the drones burrowed deeper, Raj maintained communication with Earth, keeping command informed of their progress. Abruptly, the ground beneath them shuddered, a low, growing rumble that intensified rapidly. Seismic activity? Ada asked, her voice tinged with alarm. It's not natural, Kale assessed, scrutinizing his instruments. The drones have activated something, perhaps an energy field, possibly a defense mechanism. The tremors escalated, and a resonant groan vibrated through the lunar valley, unsettling the team. Everyone, back to the shuttle, Raj commanded. However, before they could retreat, the ground split open, exposing a radiant chasm. Emerging from the abyss was a structure, its surface inscribed with ancient script akin to what Kale had been studying. The design was unmistakably non-human, sleek, metallic, emitting a soft blue glow. We found it, Kyle whispered in awe. The Ao Astra Prayoga. But at what cost? Raj pondered aloud, his gaze fixed on the alien construct. They had unearthed a power potentially beyond their comprehension, a divine instrument now in the grasp of mortals. Regrouping, the team faced the revealed artifact with a mixture of trepidation and intrigue. We need to decipher this quickly, Raj stated decisively. Kyle, you and Mira analyze the structure. Ada, prepare our exit strategy. We're not safe yet. As Kyle approached the artifact, extending his hands towards the enigma, the real challenge of their mission and humanity's resourcefulness was just beginning. Before them, the unearthed Astra Prayoga. An ancient monolith stood as a silent sentinel from a forgotten epoch. Its surfaces were adorned with luminescent glyphs that pulsed rhythmically, as if the artifact were breathing in the desolate lunar atmosphere. Dr. Kale Renner approached cautiously, his scientific curiosity clashing with a primal fear of the unknown. It's almost as if it's been waiting for us, he muttered, his voice barely audible over the comm link. Commander Raj Singh maintained a vigilant watch on the perimeter, his hand instinctively resting on the sidearm at his belt. Just be careful, Kale. We don't fully understand what we're dealing with yet. Kale nodded, pulling out his portable scanner and began to analyze the energy patterns emanating from the monolith. The device beeped intermittently as it struggled to categorize the ancient technology. It's unlike anything I've ever seen, Raj. The energy. It's not just powerful, it's... It's orderly, structured as if it's been designed to be incredibly efficient. Mira Chen, joining Kale's side, peered at the readings. Could it be a power source or a weapon? Both, perhaps, Kale speculated, tracing a finger along the glyphs. As his touch connected with the cold, hard surface of the Astra Prayoga, the patterns shimmered brightly, reacting to his contact. Suddenly, a deep hum filled the air, a sound that resonated more in their chests than their ears. Kale, what did you do? Raj asked sharply, his focus snapping back to the artifact. I, I'm not sure, Kale stammered, stepping back. The monolith's light intensified, casting long shadows behind the small human figures huddled around it. The ground beneath them vibrated slightly, and without warning, a holographic display sprang to life above the monolith. It depicted the solar system, with lines connecting the planets in a complex network. Kale and Mira exchanged looks of disbelief. The Astra Prayoga was not merely a weapon. It was a map, a guide, a legacy. It's showing us something. Something crucial about how it was used, Mira said, her voice filled with wonder. Kyle analyzed the holographic data, his mind racing. This isn't just about power, it's about balance. The Astra Prayoga 
was used to stabilize planetary alignments and orbits. It's terraforming technology capable of remaking worlds. Raj absorbed the revelations, the implications slowly dawning on him. If we can learn how to control it, we can not only defend Earth but also assist countless other worlds. This could change everything. But first we must master it, Kyle added solemnly, and we must do so quickly. As they set to work under the silent vigil of the stars, the small team on the moon wasn't just uncovering ancient technology. They were stepping into a new chapter of human destiny, one illuminated by the legacy of a long-extinct civilization's greatest achievement. The Gavorn fleet loomed ominously in orbit, casting a stark silhouette against the vast expanse of space. Below, on the lunar surface, the team clustered around the Astra Prayoga, deciphering its capabilities and unveiling its secrets. The air was thick with a potent mix of dread and anticipation. Dr. K.L. Renner, the glow of the artifact reflecting in his eyes, was immersed in deep concentration. The data streaming from the monolith outlined a complex framework of cosmic balances and alignments. This device can manipulate gravitational fields on a planetary scale, he articulated, his voice imbued with both awe and apprehension. It's designed to create habitable environments, potentially even to reforge ecosystems. Commander Raj Singh, who had been monitoring communication channels, maintained a calm demeanor. We need to initiate a dialogue with the Gavorn. If they realize what this technology can achieve, they might view us as allies rather than as targets for conquest. Mira Chen, responsible for maintaining the artifact's stability, nodded in agreement. It's a tool of creation, but in the wrong hands, it could easily be transformed into a weapon of mass destruction. Raj activated the comm unit. This is Commander Raj Singh of the Earth Defense Corps. We seek to parley with the Gavorn fleet commander. We possess information vital to the safety of both our civilizations. After a suspenseful pause, a response crackled through. This is Commander Zorak of the Gavorn. Speak, Earthman. Raj stood resolute, his eyes fixed on the communication screen. We have discovered an ancient artifact, the Astra Prayoga. It wields significant influence over planetary systems. It was apparently designed to stabilize and terraform planets, not for warfare. A moment of silence followed, then Commander Zorak's voice returned, now laced with curiosity. You describe technologies that could benefit many. We will halt hostilities for a demonstration. Proceed. Kale, with Mira's assistance, activated the Astra Prayoga. The monolith vibrated to life, its surface shimmering with energy. They directed the beam towards a barren sector of the moon, ensuring it was well away from any bases. The once lifeless expanse began to transform, ice thawed, forming pools of water, and within minutes primitive plant life sprouted, bringing shades of green to the lunar gray. The transformation was streamed live to the Gavorn fleet. Commander Zorak, observing the rejuvenation of the barren lunar landscape, remained silent for a long while. Finally, he spoke, his voice now echoing a newfound respect. Such power such potential for rebirth. We have misunderstood your capabilities, humans. Raj responded, and we have misjudged yours without striving for understanding. Let us harness this technology together for the benefit of all. Negotiations ensued with the humans detailing the functions and limitations of the Astra Prayoga. Terms were formulated for a joint galactic initiative aimed at exploring and employing the technology for ecological restoration and terraforming across selected planets. As the agreement was finalized, a sense of triumph permeated the lunar base. Mira turned to Kyle, her face alight with relief and hope. Today, we didn't just avert a war, we might have ignited a galactic renaissance. Kale smiled his eyes on the now verdant lunar test site. And to think, they once mocked us. Now, we stand united on the cusp of a new era. The ancient weapon, once a harbinger of destruction, had become a beacon of unity and progress. The signing ceremony aboard the Gavorn flagship marked an unprecedented event in galactic history. 
representatives from various civilizations convened, setting aside their differences to embrace a new era of cooperation initiated by humanity's unexpected discovery. The vast chamber, typically a domain of command and control, was transformed into a hall of peace with the Astra Prayoga at its heart. No longer a weapon, but a beacon of potential. Commander Raj Singh stood beside Commander Zorak, their previous animosity replaced by a cautious partnership. The documents they were poised to sign would not only cease hostilities, but also establish the terraforming and ecological restoration initiative, Terry, a collaborative multi-species effort spearheaded by Earth and the Gavorn. As the representatives prepared to sign, Raj addressed the assembly. His voice resonated not just throughout the chamber, but across the galaxy as the event was broadcast live. Today marks not the end, but the beginning. The beginning of a united effort against the ravages of war and decay, using the very tool that could have been our end. Commander Zorak nodded, his deep voice adding gravitas to the moment. The bravery and ingenuity of humans have taught us a valuable lesson. We stand together now, not out of fear, but out of respect and hope. Dr. K.L. Renner, standing off to the side with Mira Chen, watched as the new allies affixed their signatures to the parchment. K.L., whose relentless curiosity had catalyzed this moment, felt a swell of pride. Turning to Mira, he whispered, Who would have thought that our last stand would turn into our greatest leap? Mira smiled, her eyes capturing the historic scene. Only humanity, Kale, only humanity. With the formalities concluded, the floor opened to informal discussions among the delegates. Ideas were exchanged, plans proposed, and the future, once shrouded in impending doom, now gleamed with possibilities. Humanity was at the core of it all, no longer the underdog, but a key player in the galactic community. As the gathering dispersed, Raj and Kale stepped aside for a private conversation. Raj clasped Kale's shoulder, a gesture of gratitude and respect. We did it, Kale, not just for Earth, but for everyone. Kale nodded, his gaze drifting to the stars through the viewports. And to think, this is just the beginning. There's so much more out there waiting for us. Let's ensure we're ready. Subscribe for more stories.